South African bus chief is taking a brave stand against the taxi mafia. He is Johan Ferreira of Intercape. Welcome, Johan. Good morning, Krista. Johan, please take us back a few years when taxi operators first started demanding that you increase your prices or pay them a so-called levy. Uh, how did you react to their threats or their blackmail? Look, it happened, it, it all started about 2016 when the taxi operators started to question the validity of our bus permits on specific routes, uh, questioning timetables, questioning prices, questioning everything. And there was meetings with the local authorities, with the uh, PRE, which is the pro provincial regulatory entities that are responsible for issuing the permits. Nothing could be found wrong with our permits. Okay, we continued with our services. When the taxis saw they couldn't stop us in a legal way. They went underground and they started to attack the buses. They started to, to victimize the drivers, victimize the passengers. They started to throw buses with stones. They prevent passengers from boarding, from uh, disembarking the coaches. Uh, eventually, it, starts to, it, it then started to escalate in shooting incidences and literally assaulting the drivers, assaulting passengers, stopping buses at the bus stations in the Eastern Cape and pulling passengers from the buses itself with guns. Um, and, you know, it just escalated where uh, eventually a driver was murdered. Many passengers were injured. Drivers were injured. Passengers uh, were traumatized. Uh, our staff was traumatized. And the police made no effort to arrest anyone. Not today, you know, 194 cases, not one arrest. So that forced you to turn to the courts to try and get the, the authorities to act. Now you've won, what, how many cases already? Well, we've won five cases. The latest one with an appeal that the uh, Minister of Transport in the Eastern Cape, the MEC, lost. We are now uh, awaiting the trial of the uh, appeal uh, that the Minister of Police brought uh, of adjustment against him. So we agreed to the leave to appeal from a strategic point of view, because we believe that a judgment in our favor will be stronger in a appellant court than just, you know, losing an appeal. So this will be, a la again, a, la a landmark case for South Africa, where we have taken the Minister of Police, the Hawks, the uh, Investigative uh, Directorate, uh, and we have said to them, you have to investigate and you have to make arrests. You cannot let 194 cases just disappear and be scrapped like many, many cases are scrapped in South Africa. That leads to a dead end, according to the police. But how do you feel about them legally fighting not to do what constitutionally they should do? No, look, as a business person, I've taken a decision, you know, whether I have to or could, be, could invest more in, in, in the country. And I had to do a stress test on the system. And the stress test for me was to see if the judiciary system holds up, then there are hope. And it has uh, come through in a big way. You know, it has delivered, it has made sound judgments um, by, by different judges, you know, judging on this more or less the same issue. So, so, you know, clearly we are in the right and we are supported by the Supreme Court. Uh, we are also will be, and I, and I can promise you that we, we, we will be vindicated in the appellant court as well. So then we'll have six judgments against government where they have constantly failed to upheld the constitution, their fiduciary responsibility in terms of the office that they hold. In other words, the position as a minister or an MEC, and they have gone further and to use public funding to fight a private person conducting a business in South Africa to ask for legal assistance and for justice. You know, somebody is murdered. A driver, Bankikaya, was murdered outside my office in Cape Town. No one is arrested. That's not justice. You know, Ramaphosa, Chele, and Fukile, they were all warned. We wrote letters. I went public. I've made maybe 60, 50, 60 appearances on television, newspapers, radio, talking about this issue. They knew it was coming down the pipeline. And yet, they did nothing. They didn't say anything. They didn't condemn the violence. In fact, they supported it by fighting me, bringing 
her court cases and say, well, not, not their problem. How can, it not, how can it not be their problem? If they are responsible and paid to, you know, for law and order in this country. Jan, by now you must know, sorry, Jan, by now you must know a lot about the taxi mafia. What powerful links do you believe they have that gives them this kind of protection? Uh, listen, it's the proverbial, you know, tail that wags the dog. You know, it's, it's just follow the money. Just follow the money. Why are there no arrests? I believe the police, the traffic department, um, government are all in cahoots, there are a golden thread that they are not to be touched, hands off. You know, and, and, and I believe it's money. It's all about the money. It's all about the money. Well, you have refused to pay them uh, a, a levy. What, when last did you hear from them? Are you still getting threats? <laughs> what, what are the most recent incidents? I think, I think, you know, we have touched on the right nerve when we took the police to court and the Minister of Police and the MEC and the you know, MEC of Transport, we didn't take the taxis because, you know, they are like a man of straw. You know, <laughs> you don't get a real address, you don't get a real name, you don't get a real... Nothing is real. Okay? Everything is underground and undercover. So um, we have gone after the police and we have put tremendous pressure on the police. So far, in so far as we have uh, established and taken the commissioner, the national commissioner of police, to task, where uh, we've taken him to court, and we said you are in contempt of court, and the and the court found him in contempt of court. Both the local Eastern Cape commissioner of police and the national, uh, you know, commissioner of police were found in contempt, and only then, you know, they started to write two, three lame letters, had two, three lame, um, you know, meetings, just, you know, to try and put up a smoke screen and say, well, you know, we are doing something. You can't really put us in jail. We, we, we've done something. We've not done it, but we've done something. You know, and this is how they get away literally with murder because nobody's arrested. 194 cases, that's unforgivable. That's unforgivable. Johan, what has this cost your company in financial terms? No, hundreds and millions of rags. But, you know, it's not about the money. It's about the lives. The lives being threatened, people being traumatized. Um, Donkey Kai that lost his life. You know, his late wife came and she literally washed his blood from the pavement and from the cement outside in our yard, the bus yard. I saw him a few minutes before he passed away. And... You know, even that shouldn't have happened because we waited about 45 minutes for the, for the ambulance. How can you wait 45 minutes in a city for an ambulance? And the police are standing there. We can't touch him. We can't help him. We can't do anything. They prevented us from helping him. You know, there's so many things in South Africa that's just so wrong. That is just so wrong. And there's this man, lost his life. He came to do an honest man's work. And he was shot in broad daylight outside my office, here in the street. Now, and there's you know, been no justice. No, but, you know, I will not rest until justice are being brought forward and somebody is being held accountable. I'm not going to stop. Otherwise, I will be held accountable one day. You know, God's asking, is going to ask from me, what have you done? What have you done? You've been in charge of this company. This man was in your service. What have you done? I'm not going to get that. I'm not going to get that question. Somebody else is going to get that question. Johan, as a matter of interest, how many passengers uh, does your company transport across sub-Saharan Africa every year? It's close to four million. And has the intimidation and the attacks affected the number of passengers traveling by bus? Well, look. Um, Obviously, you know, people are scared, but people mm. also understand, you know, living in South Africa comes at a price. You know, doing business mm. in South Africa, there's a price tag to it. And, mm. you know, where you drive in your car and you get mucked or you get, like we've now seen, you know, they hijack people, you know, they, 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 it's, it's, it's a, South Africa has become a dangerous place. So whether you're in a bus, a private car, a taxi, 
you know, you're never really safe, you know, and people has come accustomed to it, but Intercape is still being perceived as a safe way of traveling. So we have a lot of more uh, uh, loyal customers and, um, and, you know, we, and, and I think also they appreciate what we've done, gone out of our way, the extra mile, kept on fighting for justice and, um, and police protection, you know? So I think people appreciate that and they support that. That's why we are still supported very much so. So as we speak right now, what are your next steps, Johan? Our next step is um, we await, uh, most probably we will appear before the Portfolio Committee uh, in Parliament, chaired by Ian Cameron, where the police will now have to come and provide the plan uh, ordered by the court, you know, the, the, the plan to protect uh, and safeguard passengers and, and, and buses and drivers. So we're awaiting that. And furthermore, we are also awaiting the um, hearing of the application uh, for appeal. So uh, I think that will happen in the next month or two. And hopefully um, it will be in our favor like the others because I can't see how it can't be. And then, you know, we'll take it from there and put pressure on the police to make arrests. There's 149, uh, 194 cases, no arrest made. And we want the police to investigate and bring the perpetrators in front of the court and get them judged. And they must take responsibility what they've done. Thank you. That was Johan Ferreira of Intercape speaking to Biz News about the brave stand he's taken against the taxi mafia and the long legal fight he has fought to get protection for his bus passengers and justice for those who have been assaulted and for the bus driver who was killed. Thank you, Johan. I'm Christine.